Uh, welcome to How to Tuesday uh, Stress Management. My name is Camille Cook. I am your Instruction Outreach Librarian, and today we are joined by our wonderful Park Counseling Services uh, and Tyler Smiley, one of our wonderful Park Counseling interns. And today we're talking about stress management techniques. As you begin to get ready for the last couple weeks of the semester, it can feel super overwhelming. You have deadlines, you have lots of projects and final exams on the horizon. So we want you to be prepared to ace these last couple of weeks with the holidays coming up, with less time, with less daylight. We want you to be prepared. So uh, Tyler is going to walk you through some amazing stress management techniques and some ways to help you balance your stress as you begin these last few weeks of the semester. As a reminder, How To Tuesday is your quick bite of information, just a 20 to 30 minute webinar. There will be time live for questions at the end. If you're watching this on repeat, welcome. Uh, we do have all of our contact information in the box below. So feel free to reach out to us with any questions you have. I'm going to hand it over to Tyler and he's going to kick us off. Cool. Thanks, Camille. Um, let me take just a second to get my screen set up. And then we are going to talk about some stress management. Okay. Oops, let's do that. And then I gotta get Zoom working. Okay, so let me share. Okay, and then hopefully on the screen you see a PowerPoint slide that says stress management. Are you guys able to see that? Yes. Cool, thank you for the verbal feedback. Um, so today, like Camille said, this is gonna be a pretty quick conversation. We're just gonna talk about a few ways that you can check in on your stress and then manage your, spread, manage your stress during these periods, like finals week, like end of the semester. Um, just before we get going, like Neil said, I'll introduce myself. I'm Tyler Smiley. I'm one of the interns here at the Counseling Center. If you didn't know, Park does have a Counseling Center for students. Services are totally free here. You pay with it with your tuition, so you may as well get use out of it. Feel free to stop by our office in McKay. If you wanna speak with a counselor, you can reach out to our email or find us online as well. So counseling services are available, spread the word. In our presentation today, we're just gonna to touch on a few things pretty quickly. One, how to check in on our stress, how to determine what's really going on, why we're feeling the way we're doing, and if it's even a problem. We'll talk then a little bit about how we can manage that, what we can do with this information. So let's just hop right into it. A lot of people want kind of that quick, what do I do when I'm stressed? That life hack, if you will, of things to do. Really what you need to do when you're stressed is ask yourself, why am I stressed? What's going on? We all have different things in our life affecting us. They all affect us differently too. Um, but we tend to kind of think about stress holistically. I'm either totally stressed and overwhelmed or I'm feeling good. A lot of times people come in and they haven't really taken the time to think, why am I stressed? How is this impacting me? But if you know how it's impacting you, you're gonna respond differently. There are a few questions that you should really be asking yourself. One is what I just said. How is this stressful time impacting me? How is that stress showing up in my life? Generally, it's gonna be physically, emotionally, and mentally. Am I noticing changes in my sleep habits and my eating habits? Am I angry more often or anxious more? Am I kind of withdrawing from my friends? Am I kind of feeling myself perseverating on some thoughts and stuff? Being able to answer those will give you a path on how you need to go about reducing that stress. Another important thing to think through is, is this stress short-term or long-term? Because that makes a huge difference. A lot of what you guys are probably feeling upcoming is short-term stress. You know, finals week, that's pretty short-term. We know there's an end to it. Um, if you have to buy a new battery for your car, it sucks to give up those few hundred bucks, but it's a one-time thing. Usually if it's short-term stress, the answer is just kind of cope through it and learn those strategies to get through this moment before you can kind of get back to your baseline. That's different from long-term stress. If you're experiencing long-term stress, that might be 
an ongoing financial situation. It could be an unhealthy relationship. It could be a million things, but something you're kind of stuck in, something like a bubble bath or breathing exercises really isn't going to make a difference on that. That's where you need to be having a more meaningful conversation with yourself on what do I need to change in my life? What can I change in my life? The third thing that I think is really important with this self check-in is to ask yourself, is this good stress or bad stress? Um, The word stress itself, we tend to think of as bad. We also are kind of stuck societally right now in thinking that all feelings are bad. If I feel an emotion, something's gone wrong. And that's just not true. We need to feel stressed sometimes, just like we need to feel happy sometimes, just like we need to feel angry or sad sometimes. Having these emotions are part of being healthy, as long as they're happening in an appropriate amount at the appropriate times. To talk a little bit more about that, this visual kind of points it out. There is an optimal level of stress. There's a kind of point of stress where it actually improves our performance, makes us feel better. You've probably experienced this if you grew up doing anything sports related or performative. Um, So if you played an instrument, if you were on the sports team, you probably had those moments right before the game, right before the recital, your stress increased. It probably helped your performance a little bit too. It made you a little more focused. It gave you that energy you needed to be in the moment. That happened to me during this presentation, right before I got a little spike in stress and it's helping me stay focused on this presentation. If we have too little stress, Sometimes that can cause problems of its own. You probably feel that in the middle of the semester where things are just kind of coasting and you don't really have any motivation to do your work. You're procrastinating a lot more. This increase in stress can make you a little more efficient, a little more energized. The issue is that when we get too much stress, we fall on the other side of that curve where we get fatigue, some anxiety, maybe panic, and it starts to hinder our performance. So we want to be honest and check in with ourselves. Is the short-term stress kind of fueling me as I need right now? Or is this too much for me? But just know it's okay to feel stress. That's, That's part of the human experience. Another way to check in on stress is to, instead of thinking about stress, think about wellness. So something that we use here a lot in the counseling center is the wellness wheel, or you'll hear it called a life wheel sometimes. Um, And really what it is, it's a way to break your life up into individual facets to assess how those are doing. We sometimes, like I mentioned, think of stress, think of life a little too holistically. It's either all going well or it's all going poorly. This wellness wheel allows us to think specifically, how am I doing with my physical health? How am I doing with my social health, with my sense of purpose? with my family relationships, with my emotions. And it breaks it down to give you a little more insight to where am I doing well? Where have I built those strong resiliency factors? And where do I maybe need to work a little bit? This image isn't the end all be all of what goes in the wheel. It's something you can totally tailor to what's specific to you. And it may change at different points in your life. So what I recommend doing and what we'll do here a lot in the counseling center is we'll take one of these wheels and we'll fill them in for ourselves. These are just a couple that I got off like a 10 second Google search. So you can find your own online. If you just search life wheel, you can find one that's blank or has categories. But what you do is you take each of these categories and you rate yourself one to 10. 10, am I doing great at this? Or one, am I totally not doing well on this? And when you do that, you'll get an image kind of like what you see over on the left of this kind of pie chart filled in to different levels. If you're at kind of an eight to 10 on most of your wheel, a short-term stressor isn't gonna have too much of an impact on you. If most of your wheels sitting at like a two or a three, that same short-term stressor could be catastrophic because you don't have that wellness going on to kind of balance the stress. Another really important thing with this wheel exercise is it can hone you into what specifically is causing stress right now. Yeah, I'm stressed because it's finals week, but is most of that stress coming because of your financial situation? Is it coming because of your what's going on with your family or at home? 
having this kind of self-assessment really helps you realize, okay, here's what I need to focus on. I need to do some work with my physical health or with my friendships, what be it. Um, so these different ways to check in are really going to how are going to be how you create your stress management plan. Because like I said, we are all going through finals week together, but that's about all that's the same for us. We have our unique stressors. We have our unique responses to the stressors. And you got to be really honest with yourself to deal with that and to manage that. That being said, if you do that self-assessment and you figure out kind of what's going on, awesome, do it, totally encourage that. There are a few things that tend to come up this time of year with this particular group of individuals, college students at the end of their semester going into the winter break. When we get high stress, we tend to fall back on some of these wellness factors. And sometimes that's okay. A lot of times we do it without even realizing or thinking that we're doing it, but we wanna be mindful and we wanna stay proactive on some of this. One of the biggest ones that we see most frequently is you need to continue to focus on your physical health. A lot of times, if you're feeling stressed, if you have a million things to do, you stop exercising, you don't give yourself as much sleep as you need, and you probably start eating or you start eating more poorly. Take the time, put the intention into your physical health. You got to keep eating. You got to keep supplying your body those nutrients to be able to do the things that you're doing. Just because stress is reducing your hunger doesn't necessarily mean you need to eat less. You want to still put some intention into that. If you're getting a little nauseous at some of the foods you normally eat when you're stressed, you may need to think about changing your diet to something a little more basic like oatmeal or fruit, maybe like a protein shake, but you got to keep eating. Same with sleep. Uh, this is this is the hill I will die on with these college students who think they don't need sleep. You need sleep. All humans need sleep. If we had figured out a way to not sleep, we as a species wouldn't still be spending a third of our life doing it. The more sleep you can get, the more restorative sleep you can get, the better you will be at handling stress. Um, sleep hygiene is kind of the buzzword right now with this. If you Google sleep hygiene, that'll give a ton of strategies on how to have quality sleep. It's a lot about routines. It's a lot about disconnecting from technology. Um, but just if you are ignoring sleep, rethink that because um, it is having an impact on you. It also can cause a lot of long-term impacts. Same with exercise. Stress is physiological first and foremost. So we want to make sure that we are taking care of our body. I'm not saying you got to go lift weights or run a marathon, but Make sure you're moving. Make sure you're doing what you normally do or maybe even increasing that a little bit. Go for a walk, get out, just do something to stay moving around. The second thing that we recommend really frequently with this group of folks is practicing some mindfulness. Um, and when we talk about mindfulness, really all we're talking about is staying focused on the present. Meditation can be a part of this and it can be really powerful and productive if that kind of floats your boat. If it doesn't, there's still a lot that you can get out of mindfulness. Um, but when we're stressed, we tend to focus a little too much on the past or a little too much on the future. So finding ways to really stay focused on right now what's going on, that can keep us kind of cognitively at ease. The third big one, maintain your social interactions. It's really easy when you get busy to socially isolate, to stop hanging out with friends. They're probably doing the same thing. Um, some of that is okay, but make sure you're finding your balance. You're still getting the benefit of that social interaction. When we start to isolate those thoughts and those feelings that we tell ourselves, just kind of continually get worse and worse. Um, so rely on your friends. That's okay to do. So those are really kind of the big things that we want to be doing. You want to check in on yourself, be really honest about what's causing my stress and where do I need to focus? Where do I need to maybe tweak some things? And also, it's a good reminder of what am I doing well? School is really stressful right now, but if everything else is going great, that's a good feeling. And that maybe just make the stress better on its own. It's also just focusing on some of these basics, physical health, mindfulness, social interactions. The last thing that I want to touch on is for those who kind of like that life hack, that 
just what can I take away? What's what's my kind of self-help thing I can tell myself? Um, one that some folks say is really helpful is just think of the four A's of stress management. What can I do in this moment? I can avoid, alter, adapt, or accept. Um, I think the biggest one here is avoid. Believe it or not, a lot of stressors in your life are probably avoidable at least to some extent. You can't avoid the papers that you have to do. You can't avoid the tests you have to take. But there's a lot in our day-to-day -day that's really stressful right now. If we think of global events with Israel and with Palestine, with Ukraine, with everything happening with the climate, with the list could go to 100. Some of that stuff you may want to check in on how much do I want to be interacting with these news articles, with these videos? How much is that helping me? I'm not saying live under a rock, but, you know, we do get to choose how much we engage with media that stresses us out. Um, and being really honest about that. Another stressor to potentially avoid are people who add stress. Um, most of us know someone who is always kind of in that stressed state of mind and who kind of tends to infuse everybody with that stress. Be honest if the people you're surrounding yourself with are helping or if they're people you maybe want to avoid during periods of high stress. You also have opportunities to alter your situation sometimes, right? Not always, but if you are stressed about a project and you're trying to get it done in your dorm suite and there are three people distracting you, alter the situation. Maybe go somewhere else. Maybe find ways to tweak your physical situation to help ease some of that. You do have that agency in certain situations. The third one is adapt to the stressor. And this one really has to do with your mindset. It's kind of challenging. Why is this so stressful for me right now? Why am I letting this get to me? Am I being realistic with my thoughts or am I kind of going into worst case scenario thinking? But just taking that moment to step back and think honestly, how can I infuse a little gratitude into this, a little positivity into this? You'd be amazed at how big of a difference that can make if you just kind of change the message you're telling yourself. And then the last one is just kind of accept that not everything can be changed. This can be really big, um, especially for those stressors that are a little bit avoidable or maybe a stressor caused by someone else. If you're worried about someone else's behavior or you're worried about what may happen a year from now and that's really what's causing your stress, just kind of challenging. Maybe I can just accept that I don't have control over that right now and kind of reducing your sphere of influence a little bit. So that was pretty quick. I wanted to keep this kind of short and simple, but those are the core takeaways that I want you to be aware of. The biggest thing with stress management, check in on yourself personally, what's going on, because this is not a one size fits all, but really know if this is affecting me physically, I need to take care of that physical side. If this is affecting me mentally, I need to do some mental work. And I probably need to check in, making sure I'm allowing some stress to occur without being overwhelmed by it. And then really kind of figuring out within my wellness wheel, within my life, where am I doing really well? Where can I maybe set some goals to build a little bit of stress resilience? Um, so I'm going to stop sharing because that's all that I have. And then let me, and then Zoom goes away, check here. Is there, are there any questions, any Anything that I can address before we wrap up this call today? All right. We'll give it some thought. Uh, Google a life wheel. It can be life changing, potentially. You know, stress is okay. Let it happen sometimes. But if it gets overwhelming, definitely take those steps to manage that stress. Listen to your body. Listen to what's going on. If it feels a little unmanageable, we're here at the Counseling Center, so don't hesitate to come see us. Um, but that's everything. I'll stay on the line for another minute or so in case there are any lingering questions. Feel free to type them in the chat or shout them out. Otherwise, where are you guys located, at, in the, where are you guys located at Parkville in the underground there? We are in McKay. Um, oh. We're on the second floor. We are also available for online appointments if you aren't at our on campus. 
All right, I'm going to hop off. Outstanding job, Tyler. Thank you very much. Nice work. I'll see you, man.